like the way you work it. <laughs> no diggity. In the hot dog flavored water. Yeah. All right. Viewer comments. Limp Biscuit style. Viewer comments, Limp Biscuit style. We're going to do it all. We don't have hats. I was going to say, we're all doing <laughs> red hats. <laughs> no. Red hats have been tainted. That's true. Forever. Because of the that's, hot dog that's no flavored big loss. water. Red hats aren't that cool anyway. No, not hats in general. You don't want to see me wearing a hat. You've never seen me wearing a hat. And there's no. a very good reason why. They don't make hats big enough for my <laughs> freakish gorilla head. Viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start us off with a comment from Mr. Rick Dodson. Thank you, Rick. Rick Dodson. The last big collection I purchased was from a guy who had passed away in his house surrounded by long boxes. Ooh. Although, to be fair, if I could die in any possible way, it would be in my house surrounded by comic books. That's not to... true. There's probably other ways. It was the most disgusting house I had ever been in. Cat hair and piss all over the floors. But his comics were pristine. All bagged and boarded in long boxes on top of tables throughout the house. Ooh. There you go. So that's some foresight by that prior owner. Yeah. It makes me think there's, there's one box that he left on the ground that just got soaked in cat piss. And, oh, it and... happened one time. And it had her again. Once. Yep. Oh, I wonder what. Nope. Not even yeah. going to think about it, what oh, it's was terrible. in there. It's it's wandered. Terrible. The whole box was probably. Oh, can you imagine? Just like, um, because I, I know people who have a lot of cats. It's it like, takes a lot to uh, know, having right? to like uh, shake pee pee off of a comic. And you know, if you have a bunch of cats, you got to take care of those cats. You got to clean that litter box. Get rid of them so often. Don't get rid of them. Don't I get love, rid of your I cats. I love cats. They're I good. actually, I used to have a really nice Bowen collection. The statues. Like all, all these different okay. stuff yeah. of superheroes. Yeah. And when I got Butters, my cat, if you follow me on Snapchat, you'll be able to see my cats. Um, they're, they make regular appearances on my Snapchat at Comic Tom 101. And Butters, he just started knocking them over. Like one by one, I would walk into a room and go, oh, well, there's my Hellboy statue, which is the most recent one he broke. Mm -hmm. um, all the other ones I actually had to get rid of. I sold them all because... He knocked over three of them. I had a giant size giant man. I remember that one. Remember that? Didn't you remember you got that at the bank? I did. You opened that at the bank. I remember that. And I was weirded out that you got it delivered <laughs> to work. I had of... that delivered and Captain America. Yep. I had a really nice bow in Captain America. He's, he was gorgeous. But yeah, um, Butter started knocking him over. It's protecting you. Yeah. That's what it is. He knows that they're, they're coming to get you. So. That's right. So Not no today. more statues. I don't deal with statues anymore because my cats are more important than my statues. But... We should keep statues in here. But you know what? We keep comics in here because the cats are not in here because we can't risk anything. No. Comics, we've got to keep them pristine. Next question. Thank you so much. We do appreciate your comment. Thanks, Rick. Here's a question, Ryan. Go. Boom. What's a good place to find comic book runs that started two, maybe three plus years ago? Um, this is Francisco Price, and he's new to collecting. Francisco, he's... thank you. Me too, in a way. I guess my collection is, is digital isn't as, isn't as exciting. What digital apps are you using to read comic books right now? Oh, uh, I am using uh, Comixology for purchasing, but uh, Marvel Unlimited is is uh, kind of the big one. That's the one I spend most time in. Yeah, it's more of an open source. You can read a lot of it's different like a, things. Like a without... Netflix, right? You pay your you pay your entry price and you get pretty much anything Marvel, mm -hmm. with with a few exceptions, of course. But so yeah. if you're looking to really get caught up quick, digital is a really easy way to go. Digital is the most convenient way to go. But I would probably, I think it's it's better if you go to your store, your local comic store. Your LCS? Yes, as you might have heard on the internets. Mm -hmm. LCS, local comic store. Go there. There is a Pick previews guide. A previews guide every month that comes out that these comic shops get for their customers. And you can go through and you know plan out which runs you're interested in purchasing. You know, comics come out months um later after they're being advertised it's like a two month yeah it's about two three advanced. two or month or more advanced that See. you have to put an order in for these comics um through your store so you want to go to your shop go to look through those previews guides and plan out you know what you're gonna be interested to read and if you don't have an lcs you know where they can go where can they go they can go to the description section and email russ bright owner of mill geek comics out here in washington state he's an awesome comic book guru man he knows everything dealer guru shop owner uh, an overall cool guy i'll vouch for him he's my comic book sensei and he could be yours too so email him we'll make sure you get all your comic book needs anything that a shop can supply he can do otherwise support your local lcs we want to see those thriving that is key 
Draven4808, just wondering, what are your thoughts on pressing comics? Draven, thank you so much for um, asking that question. That's an excellent question. Draven4808, just wondering, what are your thoughts on pressing comics? Ooh, that's a great question. Someone like me, you know, I, I didn't know what pressing comics was a few months ago. Mm-hmm. So, what is pressing comics? So pressing comics is part of a... It's, it's not even really, technically you would consider it restoration, but it's not because restoration actually means altering the book in some way. Okay. But it is a form of restoration in that you are repairing the book without adding anything new to the book. Thus, meaning that you can increase the grade and actually fix it. You can fix it and make it better and make it worth more. Pressing a comic is reheating the paper Okay. And squishing it between two heat presses so that it could iron out, to an extent, the cover and get rid of any imperfections that that comic may have endured in its lifespan. So if it gets, like, warped water damage or something, like exactly. crinkly covers and... Hmm. Yeah, you could take books that are low grade and bring them up a couple grades. You can take high grade books and push them past that tier of maybe even making them worth grading or even get them from that 9.4 to 9.6 or 9.6 to 9.8 status. That's the idea, I guess. It's actually a service provided by both CBCS and CGC, two grading companies that I recommend. And they offer this as a service um, that you can purchase alongside of grading. And they will grade it accordingly as an average book without any type of restoration to the process. So um, I definitely am a fan of fixing up books. I've done it myself for quite a long time. It takes practice. It's kind of an art form. I find it highly like it's almost like a form of meditation, like cleaning books, like dry cleaning them um, or going through and trying to like seek out those imperfections and to put extra effort into repairing the book. It's it's definitely fun. And you can follow me at Comic Tom on Instagram where I post a lot of before and after I've seen a few footage. of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to be doing some more of those. I have a nice stack. There's actually an ASM 252 over there that is horribly crinkled that needs some pressing, needs some tender love and care. Oh, well, that's what you're here for. That's what we're going to do. But yeah, great question. Um, I'm a big fan of pressing books. And it's actually pretty... I don't want to say it's easy because there are a lot of things you have to learn. Um, Feels like there's a lot of ways it could go wrong. Bingo. That is the big concern. Um, It takes, I would say, six months of a lot of practice before you would even want to like do use any books that are worth money. (laughs) Go go to the quarter bin and get some practice books. Is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, Don't start with. ASM 300 or something. Exactly. Yeah, you want to start with some some cheap books. And yeah, practice makes perfect. And you also want to work... And we can probably do videos on pressing alone, and we will do those eventually. But ideally, you want to kind of get... You want to work through your eras. You want to start maybe pressing some modern books and get the feel of it because it's a lot quicker to do and it's a little bit easier. And then you want to work your way into bronze and silver before you touch anything of value. Work your way back in time. Kind of, you know, you want to kind of, because the different um, eras of comics, um, the paper's different. I was going to say, it's um, not as old. The paper's yeah. Cleaner, papers, fresher. Boom. And, you know, you just have to clean them a little differently and press them at different temperatures and for different times and different methods. Um, I do a lot of tips though on Instagram. It's There's a lot of info to give though, uh, but we'll definitely do more content on that because that's a question that gets brought up a lot. Pow. And thank you for asking it. Thanks, Draven. Draven. All right, next question. How do I find people who are interested in buying comics on Instagram? Mr. Doyle Winston, thank you so much for asking that question. Great question. I remember that one. Ryan. Yeah, him and I went in on it on the YouTube comments there. I suggested hashtags. That's correct. Hashtags. We didn't mention very many hashtags in our video. No. Just in general, we just said IG comic fam. Yeah, you know, so again, hashtags. What are some hashtags that you can use? Now, we'll list a few here, but they're really the best way that you can, you know, figure out what hashtags are going to make the most sense for what you're selling is looking at other individuals who are selling comics and look at the hashtags they use. Correct. So here's a few off the top of my head IG Comic Family, IG mm-hmm. Comic Fam. Different spellings count, yeah. Yes. They're, they're different. Those hashtags. are two separate hashtags, even yes. though they mean the same thing. Um, what are some that you know? I like to get uh, specific with it. You know, like hashtag Fantastic Four, hashtag Stan Lee, mm-hmm. hashtag Jack Kirby. Yeah. You know? If you're looking up Jack Kirby stuff, you probably would be interested in Jack Kirby. Other stuff. Other Someone stuff, else yeah. might be interested. Yeah. 
Um, you also can do like hashtag comic books for sale or comic mm-hmm. book stores. Um, but the best way to find your customers are looking at for sale posts and then looking in the comments there. Because if you have a post of, of a book that's for sale and there's a bunch of people who are like, oh, that's really cool. Oh, I wish I could buy that. Or they're saying claim or, oh, I missed out on it. Or, oh, that's such a cool book. I used to have that. Those are all individuals who purchase comic books. And those are all individuals that you can follow, like, touch base with, communicate build with. Build the community. Build relationships. And that's Social what we're doing. networking. Exactly. Egg. Exactly. Great, great question. Thank you so much. Last question to the audience Ooh. for today. From the first question that if you had to pass, you almost like wouldn't mind passing around a bunch of long boxes. Alone at home. In the event home. that you yeah. had to. Yes. In the event that you had to. That I have to die? Yeah, you're going to die. You're going to die around a bunch of long boxes. Yeah. What are the two comic books that you would have out? So you mean like the cops come, they knock on the door after yes. the neighbor smells something weird and the cops <laughs> kick down the door. Yeah, what are the two What comics? are the two comics in each in each hand that I'm... Yes. Oh, man. I guess it would be one comic, huh? Because you only have one in one hand. I got two hands, baby. All right, two hands, two hands. Go ahead. Oof. Quick, man. That's so hard. You're going to die. I'm dead already. You're already dying. What are the comics in your hands? I feel Go. like one of them's got to be V for Vendetta, man. All right, like, V for Vendetta. Oh, doesn't matter what it shoots. It's, the whole, it's something whole, V. It would be my absolute. Oh, he's whole, got one through book. ten. Just right there. Okay, go ahead. That's, and then that's what, a two-hander, man. That's a two-hander. Oh. There, there's, okay, so V for Vendetta. That's there's, a flotation there's, device. There's that's ten. Oh. There's t- at least ten comics in there. So, all right. Ryan would you go, put me on the spot, man. I, I got to say V. V. Boom. Good. I'm a betrayal to my own tattoo. All right. So the book that would be in my hand? Amazing Screw on Head and Other Curious Objects by Mike Mignola. It's a compilation book. There's a bunch of issues in there. But in the back, there is a story. It's a, it's a, they throw it in there because it wasn't ever, I don't believe it was ever published by itself. And it's a short story that Mike wrote with his daughter. And that is how I would go. And we're going to leave it at that. So like you're having a heart attack and, and, that, and that's the book you run and grab. Yeah, that's the one I have Okay, as you're going to the other side. <sighs> If you were to die holding one comic book, which comic book would it be? Ooh, what a depressing question, but I do want to know what the audience thinks. Put it in the comment section below. As always, we do go through your comments, so you want to make sure to do that. Please like and subscribe the vids because we put them out Monday through Friday. And geek responsibly. Always. Nuff. Set. Take a look at these books right here. First, Mr. Freeze and New 52. Stanley cover right there. That Marvel team up is one of my favorite books. It's signed by Mignola. I'm going to take you over here to Ryan's side. We have a G.I. Joe silent issue. We have a Wolverine, Frank Miller. These are books that are all going into the mystery mail called for July. The 15th is the deadline for each month. We will showcase the books that are going out every month in our set. So expect that to change. Geek responsibly. Geekstreet101.com to sign up.